So um, we're going to open the meeting now, and if everybody could stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance, we'll start the meeting with that. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First item on the agenda is public comments. Do we have any public comments this evening? Okay. On to the second item. Second item is our annual update with Senator Eldridge. Senator Eldridge. And we, are we coming together? The we come together. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so just so everyone knows, once a year, um, Senator the new Elvis car. and State Representative Kate Hogan come and um, Thank you. give us Thank their you. update on the um, state and the towns and the districts. So tonight's our night. Our lucky night, Kate. Take one and pass it. Come on. All right. Thanks, Kate. Oh, in color and everything. Thank you. Thank you. David. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. That's not. Oh, that's not it. Thank, Thank you. you. Once again, Jamie. Good Don't evening, Mr. You. Chairman, and uh, great to be before you. I know that Representative Hogan and I saw you just a couple of weekends ago with the uh, big budget meeting and got a chance to offer our farewells and official citations to Kevin Sweet, so I know that he's now in Rentham. And uh, congratulations on Andrew being the interim town administrator, is that correct? Acting, sure. Acting, excuse me, acting. I wasn't sure of the title, so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And um, yeah, just here to, to update you on the, the budget, the state budget, and any legislation that the board may have questions about. I just passed out my my letter, my um, my budget meeting with Senate Ways and Means Chairwoman Karen Spilka uh, is next week, so this is really good timing to come before the board. And just to <clears throat> walk you through the the letter is um, in terms of sort of priorities. Um, I I continue to be supportive of of looking in terms of revenue of closing corporate tax loopholes and tax breaks. Um, been a, a critic of those for a long time. Uh, also, uh, there's a bill that uh, has been filed again this session on the Community Preser Pre Preservation Act, which I know Maynard is a community preservation town. <coughs> um, so this, this bill would, would raise the uh, state financing fee to get the match closer to 50%. I think now it's around 27%. So you know, trying to get Maynard's match in every other community, that's a CPA community, to have a higher match for affordable housing, historic preservation, and open space or recreation. On the th third item, uh, other ways to raise revenue. So the one I'm particularly focused on this session is, is Airbnb or short-term rentals because that bill has gone through the Financial Services Committee that I chair. So uh, that bill was really initiated by my House Chair, Representative Aaron Michaelwitz, and so that bill you know, has been reported favorably and it does include a local option tax. So if there were short-term rentals as there are now, but if there were more going on in Maynard, there would be the ability for Maynard to, to levy a local tax. Um, in the bill, as it was reported out, um, half that money would go to either affordable housing or infrastructure, and the other half would be at the, you know, up, up to the discretion of the town. So we'd certainly like to hear feedback on that. I think there was a real push, especially uh, from my house chair, who's from Boston, that you know, some of that money should be for affordable housing, but appreciate any input on that. On the budget process, the bottom part of page one, um, of course, my first priority is always protecting local aid. Uh, chapter 70, SPED circuit breaker, um, lottery aid. Um, on the Chapter 90 fund front, the money for roads and bridges, uh, you, you may have heard, but Governor Baker last week, I believe, filed a bill uh, for another $200 million for all towns and cities for, for Chapter 90 money, for road money. So I know that's been a big priority for Maynard. Um, I also know last week that the Department of Transportation announced a $150,000 complete streets grant. So I want to congratulate the board and Andrew on, uh, on, on pushing for that and I look forward to those improvements. Um, second item is uh, public transportation. And so um, I first just want to commend Representative Hogan. She's been a tremendous leader in getting uh, funding for the shuttle service in Maynard. And I've been a strong supporter as well. 
Um, because the district I represent also has uh, train stations like South Acton, um, I continue to push for more parking at South Acton. And uh, what, what I've said to the Board of Selectmen in Acton is that since the town owns the parking is that I hope when more parking is added that, that it's, it's, for, it's not just for Acton residents, it's for all, you know, all area residents. So that's certainly something they're considering because they're looking at trying to purchase more land to provide more parking spaces. So I, I sometimes hear from you know residents from Maynard or, or Stowe that you know obviously take the train and would like to you know have more parking there for for non-Acton residents. Um, the second page, uh, another priority is maintaining funding for vital social safety net services, including programs to help the homeless, low-income families, at-risk children, those with disabilities, and the elderly. I think in a couple weeks. I'm doing my uh, Meals on Wheels uh, uh, trip with uh, coordinator here at the, the uh, Maynard um, Council on Aging. Uh, the fourth item, which I think is, should be of particular interest to Maynard, is uh, fully fund the recommendations of the Foundation Budget Review Commission. So that was a commission from a couple years ago that looked at changing the Chapter 70 formula, but also better just generally increasing state funding for public schools. And the particular focus of the commission was uh, increased state funding for special ed costs, which I know can be uh, quite significant, especially in a small community like Maynard. Uh, health insurance costs for, for obviously for teachers and staff. Uh, ELL, uh, so, so those who, whose first language is in English. Uh, and then just changing the chapter 70 formula so that Maynard and other communities would get more state funding and have it be less uh, uh, based on the property tax. So we're, we're hoping to incorporate uh, a next round of funding to, to meet that goal of the foundation budget review in the, in the, in the budget. Uh, the fifth item, uh, significant investments in capital infrastructure, transportation, water, higher education, libraries, and public schools. On the last item, which has really been you know, a passion of mine and also goes to my predecessors, Senator Pam Rezor and Senator Bob Durand, is protecting the environment. And once again, the Environment League of Massachusetts has launched the, the green budget, that, uh, the goal being that 1% of the state budget would be dedicated to the environment. Governor Baker released his budget two weeks ago, and I think the percent is 0.6%, so we're not there yet. So hoping the, the legislature can, can do a better job in that. Um, the last thing I'll just note, because I, I handed you the, the attachment is the cherry sheet, is that you, you will see the governor's budget proposal. And it does include an, an increase for Chapter 70 money for Maynard. So it's proposed to go from $5 million to $5,358,000. So that's certainly encouraging, and I want to make sure the Senate budget you know, reflects that number, or hopefully higher. Revenues are generally good, go, good right now. So I'm hoping that this will be a budget where you'll see some modest increases in all the areas that I talked about. I don't think you'll see major increases, but hopefully some, some modest increases. So, so that's uh, our presentation, and uh, always very proud to partner with my friend and colleague, Representative Hogan, and uh, happy to take questions after her presentation. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I think that the Senator covered a lot of ground um, as regards to where we are in our budget process, we are not as far along as you folks are, but um, <clears throat> I think that taking um, the lead in terms of the governor extending a, a 40, $41 billion budget um, gives us the idea that, that, that uh, consensus revenues are better than they were the year before, that we will approach it in a cautious fashion because we have seen uh, revenues one month be extremely uh, heartening and then the next month fall. And having to try to anticipate that uh, will create sort of a, a, a fairly conservative approach to the budget. But, you know, for local aid, it looks like there'll be a, at least a 3.5% increase um, in education, 2.5% increase. Uh, aid for local councils on aging, <clears throat> we've been working with the Mass Council Councils on Aging um, to look at reaching a goal of $12 per senior uh, by 2020, when we may be able to reach that by 2019, which would be helpful, I think, for the town of uh, Maynard for sure. An aspect of the budget that I'm beginning to look at 
Um, I met with uh, some of the members of the school committee in the last week or so and discussed their concerns uh, around their budget items and, and, you know, in general, just concerns about how we sustain uh, funding for the schools. And one aspect that they brought up that I'm going to take a, a look at as we move into the budget is perhaps filing an amendment to create a task force to examine uh, the oversight process for <coughs> transportation um, between uh, regional school districts and non-regional school districts and also to look at uh, how to create transparency for school bus contracts. I need to learn a lot more. I've just started to, it's amazing you start at the beginning always in some of these things, but uh, we are starting at the beginning to look at that because it looks like a way we might be able to bring more monies to uh, school districts that are not uh, regional in nature. And, and how we achieve that, I'm not sure, and whether I try to do that as a statewide uh, endeavor or if I look to just deal with Maynard for right now in some sort of a pilot program. But I'm very interested in, 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 in looking at that uh, as we move forward with the budget and also to continue again as the Senator uh, said so ably in uh, providing earmark for local transportation projects that we have here uh, which are very important to all of us. Um, one thing I want to say right away is that you are all invited to my annual St. Patrick's Day celebration, which is Friday, March 16th, from 5.30 to 7.30 at the Maynard Country Club. And we raise lots of good money, lots of green for, for the Boys and Girls Club. And uh, it's, it's used well, uh, and it is used wisely. And I don't think there's a better, a better organization for us to raise to raise money for. And so please uh, come if you can. Um, it's sort of one of the first events of the spring, and it's always well attended. So I would love to see you all there. I also uh, want to announce that the 495 Metro West Suburban Edge Community Commission has approved its report on findings um, that <clears throat> very important. We're sort of at the 101 stage where we've um, looked and examined the development challenges. Um, the report's prepared in two sections. One is basically a narrative that's a synopsis of the development challenges, but the second is a detailed regional profile. Each town will have a regional profile um, that'll be shared, and there'll also be analysis and also recommendations um, to address some of the infrastructure issues um, moving forward. It's been a, a long process. It will continue to be a process, but we will continue to work on it. Hopefully we'll see some of this uh, in the budget. One piece of the transportation issue that we've been talking about was somehow creating, um, if you would, a, a, uh, someone to, to provide oversight and to look at what, where we need to go uh, with transportation in our area as we look north to south 495 and whether that's how we connect the last mile to commuter transportation, or how we get people to and from work, how we use our regional transit authorities effectively. I know Andrew has been uh, very much a partner in all of that. <clears throat> we need to continue to have those discussions, and I do look forward to that. I've left um, a newsletter, and it has a lot of what's been going on on the Hill, a lot of what my legislation is as we move forward. Um, the House recently passed an Alzheimer's and dementia bill um, that was very important. It directs the Executive Office of Health and Human Services to develop an integrated state plan um, with uh, instructions to focus on accelerating the development of treatment and a cure for Alzheimer's disease and ways that folks can live in the community, um, as well as <coughs> handicap placards. Um, which changes um, that someone falsely obtained or falsely using handicap placard um, will crack down. This basically cracks down on fraudulent practice and it does so in a much stricter fashion. So that is, I think, really important. I think anyone that works in Boston um, sees that every day. Um, some of my legislation that I'm working on very quickly, I don't want to take all your time. Um, Increasing access to dental care. I've been working on that very closely with both the Dental Society and those folks um, that are wanting to increase access to dental care through uh, the creation of a dental therapist. We've been working with everyone to try to make that happen. I think we are at the end. 
um, or the beginning of the end of the beginning um, to see about whether we're going to be able to bring that forward. And <clears throat> in general, uh, it's just been a very, very, very busy um, session. We've also had a uh, public health informational hearing on domestic violence, uh, working very closely with the lieutenant governor and other stakeholders. Um, it was very well attended, and, and there was information that came in from so many different um, parts of our state to talk about this um, really important issue. So those are, <clears throat> those are some of the things I also tried to put as much as I could about the, uh, the EDGE Commission in so that people could take a good look at it. We had a, had a great um, Metro West Daily News article on, on the uh, commission and how we see it as a blueprint <coughs> for the future. So we're happy to take any questions on what's happening uh, at the state or here at home. And I have a question. Um, thank you both for the presentations. They were wonderful and very informative. And Senator Eldridge, thank you for this cherry sheet. I think it really helps break things down. Mm -hmm. One of my concerns, and I'm hoping you can help us understand maybe where the governor's coming from with the cherry sheet for next year, is Maynard's having a huge problem in balancing its budget because of the number, the six figures that we're sending out every year to students going into charter schools oh, yeah. and the cost. Mm -hmm. And it looks like in the cherry sheet that the budget for 2019 is slashed over 50%, which is mm -hmm. going to be, even though the gross amount overall with the increase in Chapter 70 money is larger, that's going to be detrimental to a town like us, um, especially mm -hmm. when for AMSA, Marlboro, we learned, reached their cap on how many students they can send. So we think in the lottery system, Maynard's going to be sending even more students if mm -hmm. people are applying so do you know his reasoning for that um, in doing that or anything we could do as a town to kind of express our concerns mm -hmm. yeah so unless that's a great great question so I, I can't explain why he proposed that other than that you know we know that he's been a very pro charter school person and and hasn't seemed to have been very sympathetic to the, the point that, that traditional public schools are losing significant funding Mm -hmm. from, from schools leaving the district to go to a charter school. So I, I generally feel that the legislature uh, will do a lot better than that. But, you know, I am very concerned about charter schools expanding without fixing the formula. So I'm hopeful that the legislature can get to, you know, full funding for charter tuition reimbursement, which has never, never happened. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Uh, just quickly, um, this is going to be my annual comment first, but first yes. I have a pre, uh, preliminary comment. Uh, I, I think I agree with the priorities that both of you have, and I think that they're both, you know, if I were to look at things and, and pick out, cherry pick out things that I think are important for us to pursue at the state level, I think you're mm -hmm. both on track with me, and that's for whatever it's worth, I thank you for that. Thank um, you. But here's my annual pitch. Um, Jamie, you touch upon it a little bit um, where you say that you uh, want to push for capital infrastructure, including transportation, water, higher education, libraries, and public schools. I would again echo or repeat my assertion that I think public safety buildings are oh, yes. one that, yep. um, especially here in Maynard, a community like us, and I'm sure there are many throughout our, the Commonwealth that are struggling to find ways to upgrade and update their public safety buildings. Mm -hmm. And yep. um, I've mentioned it before, and I know it's a revenue issue relative to maybe finding a model similar to the Massachusetts School Building Authority, right. where yep. communities all participate in upgrading their um, public safety buildings, mm -hmm. such as a sure. fire station, through yep. uh, an effort similar to that so the burden doesn't fall all upon a small community like ours. And again, I'm sure that they're Central Mass and Western Mass that have smaller communities that mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure they struggle with the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But there's got to be a way to help a community like ours to invest in a large project such as a, that everybody needs a public safety building. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wish there was a way to find an avenue to get there. Yeah, no, I, I agree, Dave, and I, I think it's a question of, you know, the, the we're pretty much approaching our, our cap on our bonding, you know, but um, I would say both for public safety buildings and also senior centers, yeah, there's virtually no state support for, for capital mm -hmm. infrastructure, and, yep. and someday I would hope the legislature could, could find funding for both of those. Yep. Yeah. I mean, if you want to add, if you want to begin to talk about an increase in the sales tax, that to how many pennies would go towards public safety 
it would be an interesting concept to talk about. It would certainly be interesting if a, a group like MMA mm -hmm. took it on yeah. um, and was able to present it as you know, an option moving forward. Um, and especially if we could gather data around the state for exactly where we are with public safety buildings, whether they be police stations or fire stations or a combination of both, and, and what needs to happen. I think that, <clears throat> I think until we understand on a, on a statewide basis what the need is, I think it's a little hard. We know, we know personally, the, you know, the towns, our towns that need, uh, you know, a new, uh, a new approach, but I think that it would really take looking at statewide what the needs are before we could really decide how we would want to approach it, whether it be increasing the sale tax, much the same as mm -hmm. the model used by the Mass School Building Authority mm -hmm. yep. or some such, um, some <coughs> such well, model I, I, of funding. I think I mentioned it to you at one point. It would be inter an interesting approach to consider um, like mm -hmm. a $1 surcharge on auto insurance policies. And the reason I say auto insurance policies is because public safety now is mostly responses to Right. auto accidents and other types of yeah. medical emergencies. Mm -hmm. So a dollar on every auto policy to go into a, a, a mm -hmm. some type of a bucket that can be used throughout the state to fund that type of a project is something. Mm -hmm. um, yep. My employer is probably going to be angry at me for saying that. But, <laughs> but, um, Never heard it. Yeah. Uh, but, but again, I would say MMA or some group that could put their energies to mm -hmm. taking a look at the state and telling us this is what the needs are, would really make it a lot easier to begin to look at how they would get funded. You know, it's just not a day and an age where you go get an earmark for I get that. a $2 million, $2 million in between mm -hmm. us and, and Maine, and we've got ourselves a building that just doesn't happen anymore. Um, <coughs> and so, you know, to, to try to figure out a way might really entail bringing in some, you know, like MMA or someone like that that can spend some time really putting together some data and saying this is where we need to go. Also, I would suggest to take a look at the project in Stowe, which is pretty interesting, combining the community center with the firehouse. It's a pretty neat firehouse, and they did it for fairly short money if you think about how expensive, you know, it is. So something to look at. Yeah, yeah. they had, they had an advantage of having a building that yes, needed indeed. reuse and everything else. So. Yeah. But Point well taken. Mm -hmm. yep. Anyone else? Anything else? No, I just say, you know, you know, thank you. I mean, particularly as we look at both the infrastructure and the education components, as both of you are aware from sitting in on our preliminary budget mm -hmm. presentation last weekend. Mm -hmm. you know, there's some crushing numbers that are out there as we as we look at things, and you look at. Um, you know, factors within the budget that we as a town have no control over, but can, as a single line item, completely, mm -hmm. you know, swing yeah. our budget. You know, I, I think of you know, this, you know, the special education needs when you want to support new people coming into your community, but when you have, you know, several, several dollar six figure numbers that are hitting against that, um, it ends up being a real struggle of how do you kind of still come down to a balanced budget at the end. So I think those questions of how does the state kind of look at the formulas and thinking about that to try and offset some of the community level burdens will continue to be a challenge. Absolutely. I just talked to the chairman of education too and she's going to get back to me with numbers for Maynard because the last thing we want to do is to push on those numbers and have them not actually come out the way we would like to see them. So I've asked to see if based on uh, that formula, if Maynard does well by it or if somehow it just doesn't have the right combination of, of numbers. So I will get back to the school committee on that and ask them to pass that along. Perfect, thank to, you. To um, the Board of Selectmen as well. Okay, well, thank you both again for coming in yeah. to um, Thanks for having enlighten us. us a little, share the information, I'm sure that some of us will read through and have some questions. We'll just send them off to you, but Thank we you. appreciate your time. As always, great, great to and see you. See you, you on March 16th. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have very any green. I don't have any green. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I can borrow my tie. <laughs> I'll make sure. Thank you, right, you. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Bye -bye. See you. Have a good night. Still, you can still get some far. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> March 16th, Friday. Right. Is that cardboard cut out of you?
<coughs> on to some minutes. We had two sets of minutes to approve. First minutes are January 30th, and the motion is that we move to accept and approve the meeting minutes of January 30th, 2018, as shown. Do a second. I will second. Thank you. Anybody have any comments about the uh, January 30th minutes? No comments. All those in favor? Second set of meeting minutes are um, February 6th, 2018. Move to accept and approve the meeting minutes of February 6th, 2018, as shown. Second. I'll second. Thank you, Melissa. Any conversation about the uh, February 6th minutes? All those in favor? Thank you. All right, correspondence this week. There's a lot of them. Um, A through K, move to accept the list of correspondence, correspondences as shown A through K. Do a second. Second. Thank you. Um, comments on the correspondence this week? Do we have any? There's a lot of them. I got one question um, for Andrew, and um, we, we can take it offline if we have to, but um, just a little bit of, a, of an idea, and we get them every year, the, the Mass Dot Bridge reports that come in. Um, and I always find it difficult to really analyze what they're telling us. And then I'm also trying to always every year figure out, is this on our dime if we need to fix it? So Reader's Digest version. Uh, on, the, on both of those reports, if you, um, I think it's in the lower right of the first page, it tells you that they're low uh, problem. You know, they're, they're in reasonably good shape for the foreseeable future. Um, and that's why they do these things on a regular basis, so that yeah. we get a little headwind of when it is uh, a problem. Um, and uh, the second part is, yeah, it's on our dime. Um, you're probably aware that we're um, on the list for the small bridge replacement grant for Florida Street yes. Bridge. I think it's in 2020. Yes. Uh, so when these bridges got to, say, a higher priority, we would apply to get onto a similar program. Okay, good. But, but it is essentially our money if we don't get the grants. We want to see bad bridge. Excuse me. I wouldn't want to see a bad bridge. They look tough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, some of the pictures into the, you know, this whole some, of the, some of the descriptions. Of course, it's not being part of that. You know, being in that industry or part of that. Some of the descriptions of the sidewalks and the and some of the rust and everything. You think, oh, I'm going around. I'm going to go around the bridge. <laughs> yeah. <now."> but <laughs> I'm not taking that road. It's okay. So yeah, I, I agree. But it's just the, some of the phraseology and terminology make it a little bit disconcerting but if they say it's okay it's okay yeah they're not saying they're brand new but they're well there were those pictures of like the the retaining wall or something that have holes in them and everything else and they've been so okay if we're good yeah. we're good you know so the, yeah and, and they were recommending that that type of stuff be patched you know um but that's not the structure that's going to prevent a car from traveling yeah. safely over it for um and i guess F is a letter from Abigail K about Rockland, paving Rockland Ave for that <laughs> along to the people that would be in charge of the paving and see where that goes. But um, I don't know. I, I, there's another one. That I think it's looking for some reply from us in this the letter from uh, Mark Wollston, water and sewer rate increase. Oh, yeah, that's true. I don't that's know right. if anybody wants to tackle that individually or if we want to just kind of maybe take it out of these um, correspondences and look at it as a group in our next meeting and just see what the response would be. To some of them, I think it would be interesting to hear what his thoughts are. You know, I uh, call him in. We could call him in if he wants to speak to it. We could do that too. Seemed to say that there was an attachment, and I didn't see the attachment, but maybe I, I misread it. Um, the was, was it a, a screenshot attached? Put it in his thing, man. It's because he. It's the. I think the attachment's just Kevin's letter. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I, you know, I, I don't have a problem if we want to call him in if he wants to come and talk about it and go through it. And, but, you know, it's kind of difficult to answer the, answer the questions, not knowing where exactly it's coming from. We also need to know if, he's, if, he, if he has questions. accurate numbers. I mean, he, he asked four questions in his letter. I mean, what else, what else do you want him to say? I mean, he asked four questions right there. We gotta... I understand he asked four questions, but he asked four questions based on what information? What data did he use? What data did he use to formulate the four questions? Because uh, certainly some of the some of the um, you know some of the information in the letter seems to is contradict some of the things that we know and some of the information that we use to you know, make our decisions. So there's a different set of information there than, than we've had. At least that's my opinion. But 
Well, he, he says he'd be willing to use his time to, to put forth a more equitable formula. Sure, yeah. I'd, I'd certainly be willing to look at it and listen to Although, it. Although, yeah, I think my no, my observation yeah. about the formula piece was that I mean I think in some ways there was an like a, I mean we had two hearings around the rates. We had explicit instruction that went back regarding coming up with alternate scenarios mm -hmm. and ended up with a scenario that the consultant themselves said ended up being a much more equitable distribution. So I think there's a little bit of just kind of information sharing piece of it um, that I just think was either not missing or just to, I, I would be hesitant, you know, in inviting back to the notion that we're going to reopen a rate discussion. Oh, no, no, that, I don't think that's the point. Along, yeah. along those lines, for, for the record, every tax rate we set, we have a public hearing. Every water rate we set, we have a public hearing. Every time we change one of these things, there are public hearings, at least one for every one. And I can tell you that when we set the water rate hearing, the first night there was a couple of people here who were here for something else. And the night we set the rates and went through the rest of this with the consultant and Kevin and Andrew and everybody else that's involved in the water department, Aaron and the rest, there was nobody here to ask any questions. So, you know, to ask the question six months later, you know, you ask four questions based on what information, um, you know, at the end of the day, we, we, set, time to come. we set a rate structure that a gallon of water costs the same for every person in town. That's what we, that's what we tried to get to, mm -hmm. make your water cost equitable across the town. And the way I read his letter is he wants a discount for, losing less, for using less water. And we're not in the water conservation business. We're in the water sewer business. And if you use 10 gallons of water, you pay for 10 gallons of water. If you use 100 gallons of water, you pay for 100 gallons of water. And the charges should be the same. That's, that's an equitable distribution of the cost model. But I agree. We we there was two open sessions we had. We had to continue one. So, Mr. <clears throat> Chairman, I'd like to recommend that um, the gentleman be invited in to meet with DPW Director and see if the answers to his questions are satisfying to him. And if not, then uh, add him to a future agenda if he still wants Adam? to query the commissioners. Uh, I, okay, that's fine. But how is Aaron going to answer those questions? Because we made the decision as a group. Well, he was working closely with the um, the consultant and can explain the philosophy behind it, and that may be enough to satisfy the man. I just, just think it might keep it off the agenda if it winds up being a circular conversation yeah. or, or one that could just be easily Aaron rectified. Is, if Aaron is willing to sit with him and talk about it, that's fine. That, but. And to, to the point that Cheryl made, I'm, just to uh, clarify, I'm not looking to reopen the rates. I'm just looking to see if maybe he has ideas that can be incorporated into future uh, discussions that maybe we didn't consider, or maybe he just needs or maybe better he needs information to be educated and then he in a way that, that will yeah. clarif clarify it for him. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Has anyone responded to the other correspondence from resident Jim Fulton about the Hayes Street water table? I believe, I believe and I'm correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that that's an ongoing it, discussion <laughs> among the residents, the DPW, and others. Yeah, it just hasn't been addressed to us yet. We've, no, that we've been addressed to it. We've been we've heard about it That's many what this is, right? times. I came last year before us. So we've we've oh, got right. many. Pre we've had several presentations in this room over the. Over not, I'm not. I can't say if it was when you were on the board or prior to you being on the board. But we've had several over the past several years. Um, you know, residents from that area come in with charts and graphs and pictures and you know everything else. And we've so we've we've been dealing with this issue you know consistently for several years. And I know that um, I know that it's a, it's an ongoing situation. It's nothing new, but I haven't responded to him. I've spoken about other things, but not that in particular. So, you had to get you up to speed offline. Okay. It goes okay. back three or four years. Okay. So the one so thing no that is a little bit bothersome is this last closing paragraph, which is Tonight. sort of a shot at the <laughs> outgoing town administrator. Like, yeah. It so, it's, it is what it is. I don't think Kevin did anything wrong. He's no. Was he supposed to not clean out his basket when he left, or no? The, somebody else. The selectman had asked us to keep yeah. in touch with these people on a regular basis when we had new information, and we hadn't done it in a bit of time, and he wanted to make sure he did it. I'm satisfied. Okay. All right. Any other discussion about the correspondence? Okay, I'm the author of a letter. Okay. okay. Which one? That's the one, right? Which, Jim, which one, Jim which Fulton letter. letter. We were the right. Jim Fulton letter? Okay. Right. And, you, you know, talking about what Andrew was just leaving off on, 
the only way I can interpret that letter as it came back from Kevin is that it was a blow off. It was, I'm, I'm leaving, this has been a pain in our ass, and this is what you people get. There's nothing in that letter that I see that indicates any moving forward. There's been a great deal of meetings going on in here. All right, we've seen consultants come in. We've seen the expense that the town has incurred running cameras through the pipes and so forth. We've had people being told that, that, that the town's applying for grants, that we're in, in queues. And, and, and the last I heard was that, well, we're on the five-year plan. The letter that came out from Kevin was, basically, there's nothing we can do for you. It's about the water table. And the water table is not a situation there that, that, that was present when my property was purchased. Okay? So, so that's, that's where that stands. I've been living here for, for 50 years, and I can honestly tell you that that letter that came from Kevin was a disgrace. All right? It wasn't professional. It wasn't dated. Clearly, it was a cleaning out the basket. We got to get this thing done, and that's, that's what happened. Kevin, Kevin doesn't live here. Kevin doesn't pay taxes here. All right? We do. And we're not getting the services that many of us feel that we're paying for. That neighborhood is, has been neglected. All right? We're not developers. There's no big money being put on the table by us. All right? When the big developers come around, there's moving and shaking going on. All we're looking for is for the attention to be given to the neighborhood to solve this problem. And it's being neglected. I can appreciate your frustration. I, I, I'm looking at this with, with some unconscious bias of my own, having a consistent water problem where I live, but I don't see anything derogatory or, or wrong with this email, with, with this letter he sent out to the Hay Street neighbors. You may see that differently because you're intimately involved in it, but I don't see anything wrong with it. I, unless you're talking about a different letter, I'm looking at the one that, that I have right in front of me. So you might not like that he didn't give you a, a, a solution to your problem. That I can understand. But I don't see anything wrong with Kevin sending this letter out. I think actually he should have sent this letter out. You know, would well, I like to see a solution on it? Absolutely. That that's really the the point that I would think we should focus on. It's not Kevin's letter and whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's clearing out the desk, but whether or not this issue is one that has an answer that's different from that which Kevin said it is. And uh, Chris is right um, that this this issue of the Hay Street area and that whole the presidentials basically has come up here uh, a number of times. It was really uh, prominent um, when that development, the, the, uh, the condo development went up on Waltham Street. There was a lot of discussion about it at that point because there was concern that it would worsen the problem and um, affect certain neighbors. There's been one individual that's been in here at least four Mr. times. Marshall? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Marshall? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, um, I mean, he predates the condos. He predates all Correct. That. And that's, well, that's Jim's point, is that this has been going on for a long time, and there hasn't been any um, resolution. And we did have a bunch of discussions during the condo issue, and that's when I think the expert came in and said, oh, we're going to, uh, I might be wrong with that timeline, but, but we're going to scope everything out. And then there was a discussion, as Jim said, about uh, a grant that we were in line for that, uh, I guess we did not get. Um, you, had, you, you, had, you had some, some consultants come in here, and they had plan A, plan B, plan C. Okay. Is, is what, is, is, and this was after they had evaluated the, the culvert system and the, st and the storm runoff okay, in the area. We talk to those people when they're there. You know, it's not like they just come in and they're not talking. We get the word from them that it's a disaster. I don't know what they're saying to you, but we're getting the word back from them that, that it's, it's, it's in rough shape. Them being the consultants? The people, the people who are doing the work. It was DEP. That they, that they, haven't, that they, they have not seen infrastructure in that condition. It's not normal. And, and, the, and, and, and the message that we're getting from the town hall is, well, it's just too bad. It's the way it is. Well, we don't have any money. Well, you're not at the top of the list. Well, there's a lot of neighborhoods around town that have these problems. So who are you getting, if that, I, who are you getting that message from? But the, but the one consistency that I, that I see 
from my interaction here is that when there's a developer that comes into the building, okay, there's moving and shaking going on for all of them. So if I may, I my... That couldn't be more inaccurate. If yeah, I may... Yeah, we're, losing, we're losing developers and builders on a, on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis in this building and in this town because we have too many regulations to regulate just this type of thing. So, you know, the fact that to suggest that we're moving and shaking and making changes in policy to satisfy and suit developers is, is a bad ass assertion Chris, on anyone's part. Chris, Chris I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that there was another gentleman who was in here on the very first meeting, okay, and he, ma and he made that statement. And the statement that came back from an administrator at that point to him was that if you put the kind of money on the table that that developer's putting on the table, then we'd be doing something for you too. And that, is a, so, and that is a fact. If, if I may, so just for a moment, please. The, um, I, I think a couple of points to, to throw out. First, I, I go back to Terrence's earlier point that you may not appreciate the, I think there's a potential of reading a bit too much into a tone of Kevin's letter, which for someone who's not been intimately involved in this for multiple years, we don't see. So I, I put that on the table. Second, I think the assertion, which is kind of causing a little bit of, of reaction from the board, that there's a moving and shaking for developers in a way that there is not for residents is not something that we would certainly agree with. My third point would be that we are in the process, as we've talked about in a number of meetings, of doing an overall mapping of the town's water and sewer infrastructure, which we're doing bit by bit, in order to prioritize town-wide, understanding what the needs and gaps are. And that's part of what Andrew has been doing, working with the planning board, working with others and these consultants, to get that mapping to try and understand where are our most critical issues. So we are certainly, as a town, well aware of the extensive challenges to our water and wastewater infrastructure and working as hard as we can to identify sources for capital funds to do that. I would go so far as to hypothesize, not having been part of the conversation that you're referencing, but you know we did recently benefit from a state grant for a significant water and sewer upgrade that is tied to a development. Part of the reason we were able to do that was the combination of private and public sector monies coming together that the state intersected with. I'm guessing that that may have been what was being referenced in that conversation. But I don't think that we can solve, you know, I think my, my concern is, is that we're, we're risking kind of a he said, she said 12 years ago, five years ago, six months ago. <coughs> I think, you know, part of what the concern is in which we share is that there's extensive infrastructure issues. We want, like, there's a concern that are we continuing to, to look <coughs> beyond this that you know saying that it's a water table and let's throw up our hands and walk away is obviously not an acceptable response and it needs to be something that all of you in that neighborhood know that the town's continuing to look at so how do we move forward i think from there i mean ultimately it would be the, the water commissioners well the dpw director who who runs the water sewer infrastructure right that would have the answers about what he's getting back from the consultants or the DEP, correct? That's true, and it's been about two full years since we had fresh reports on this. We have new board members, uh, perhaps getting um, everyone here up to speed on what we know and what, what those options are that Mr. Fulton referred to and whether or not they can be prioritized differently. Um, sadly, I think the, the letter from Kevin indicates that we don't have a lot of good options. It's not an easy solution. It's not an inexpensive one. Um, and DEP will tell us that even if we spent money on certain things, they can't guarantee that it's going to lower the water table. So. I'd, I'd, be inter I'd, be, I'd be interested to know in that presentation that the consultant made in here where that stands, those three options. That's, that's sort of my point, so it would be, yeah. I mean, be they, Aaron they just, most updated info, right? You'd have to, I'd have to go in and figure out exactly where we're at. I, don't, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but I, I can get I, you a proper answer. Could, could Aaron speak to that I, in a served, later I, meeting? I've served, on, I've served on committees here before, okay? In, 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 in one instance, it's a water committee, and there's a history of it. There's a history of, of, of studies and, and analyses, and they end up being on the shelf, 
okay? And, and, and we spent a whole year on that. It was just, you know, pulling stuff out from downstairs. And I, I'd really be interested to see how, how that, you know, it was just last year, how that, that presentation that that gentleman made when he came in here with the, with the, with the, three, the three propositions, A, B, and C, because I made the position at that time Okay, between them all, that, that one of them was a band-aid, and he made the agreement that, that it was a band-aid, that if it was his preference, he would go with, you know, re replacing that culvert. His, represent his representation at the time was to rebuild the culvert in the street, okay? It wouldn't be, be running through people's backyards, that it, that it would have been reconstructed in the street. So that there was, clearly, there was a thought process involved there was money involved in it. The town had to pay this guy, right? And nobody knows. And, that, and now, so you, you, you seem to be offended that I get offended at, at receiving a letter like that after all of this time and energy that is being put into this problem here. I don't think that we're in any way offended with your raising the issue or making sure that it stays on the table. I think the observation from the board was that we might not read Kevin's letter in the same way that you do. Then, then, let's, take, that, then let's take that off correct. the table. Let's and I think take, what and what Andrew has just <coughs> proposed in conversations with the board is exactly that. There were the three options. You know, not all members of the current board were here for that. Again, I would be willing to say, having as this board having had to make these types of choices in the past. Sometimes there's a significant financial cost difference between the quote unquote band aid solution and the quote unquote permanent solution, which, per our previous exchange with uh, the senator and with our representative, you know, we have to make those. Right, I understand fully that, and we had that discussion at that time when we when we when we were discussing the cost differentials. And and when the man was here, he made the representation at that time that it, in the band aid situation that that. The Band-Aid situation was going to require a yearly maintenance process through that system that has never been done in there before. And then the discussion about what the cost differential would have been to, to, to maintain that Band-Aid, okay, for you know, a limited time. It's not like it's gonna last 20 years, and basically it was buying time. Okay, so the cost differential between the Band-Aid solution and actually doing it right. He said at that point it made sense to do it right. And was that the same conversation, Jim? Jim, was that the same conversation where? So where I, it is? I have to interrupt you for one minute because we have to start a public hearing at 7:45, so we have to table this until we finish the public hearing. So we'll come back to it. We don't have to start. We have to do the public hearing as scheduled. Before that, did you just have the legal notice? Um, where is? Yeah, it's, it's in there. So we'll come back to that as soon as this is over. Uh, thunder. <coughs> All right, so the legal hearing, 745, the Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on February 21st, 2017 at 745 in the Michael J. Giannotis Room of Town Hall, 195 Main Street, Maynard, Mass. The town is applying to the development of housing and community development for community development block grant funding, staff will request the Board of Selectmen review and approve the town's CDBG application. The application includes funding for the improvement of Veterans Memorial Park, design work for rebuilding the basin parking lot, and support for the Boys and Girls Club. Boys, board, of, board approval is also requested for the community development strategy, which is part of the application. All interested persons are encouraged, encouraged to provide input or comments regarding community renewal and these topics at this meeting time. For more information about the to these topics or the block grant program, please call the office of the town planner. The location of this meeting is accessible to people with disabilities and reasonable accommodations will be provided to persons requiring assistance. If you have a special accommodation need, please contact the town clerk's office at 897-1300. So the public hearing is now open. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bill Scanlon. I'm a consultant uh, working on this community development block grant application for the town. I've been working closely with Andrew and Bill Nemsu on this and been enjoying great cooperation and making good progress. Uh, the application is due uh, Friday, March 2nd. 
Uh, we're here tonight because as part of the application process, the state requires that we have a public hearing to notify the public of the town's projects that it wishes to submit for funding uh, and allow the public the opportunity to comment and for you, the Board of Selectmen, to uh, ask questions and make sure that you're fully aware of what we're doing and also to vote to submit the application. Uh, there are actually two handouts or, or two pieces of tonight's hearing. There's a community development strategy, which is the first three pages of the handout uh, that you have, and then a summary of the application itself, which uh, includes the final three pages. Uh, the community development strategy is a document that the state requires as part of this process. Uh, the state likes to see that what projects the community is applying for have been thoroughly uh, analyzed and vetted in the community. So in this CDS, the state likes to see that there's been a process to identify local community development needs, a strategy to address those needs, and then a list of projects that can be implemented to bring about uh, completion of the town's uh, community development needs. We had a, a very uh, productive forum on January 31st with the Economic Development Committee here. We had a very good discussion on the draft document that you had, uh, and then numerous changes were made based on the comments that we received on uh, the document that you have in front of you is sort of a result of uh, a lot of effort in terms of identifying local needs and developing strategies to address those needs. Uh, the document starts out with uh, trying to understand what's actually been going on and what are the priorities that the town has um, for community development. And we're primarily focusing in on the downtown, which seems to be where most of the town's community development needs lie. And so we've looked at those needs uh, and the numerous initiatives that are going on to uh, address those needs. So for example, uh, on the first page, the number of initiatives currently underway for downtown development include Mill and Main, uh, Maynard Crossing, uh, the redevelopment areas, which uh, last year, my colleague Dan Cahill prepared a document which enabled part of the downtown to be eligible for a variety of, of state grants. Uh, that's called the entrance to downtown two. Uh, the BEAT program, which provides local funding for some of these projects. Uh, the downtown market study, which was completed in 2014 by Fine Point Associates and looked at sort of downtown the market and what sort of opportunities exist for uh, promoting new uh, uh, private development. Downtown parking, of course, is very important. And as you know, MAPC recently completed a downtown parking study and looked at capacity issues and, and occupancy rates. Uh, so there are a number of recommendations there to improve parking, which of course is critical for downtown revitalization. Uh, the wayfinding study, uh, the EDC was very interested in this particular initiative. Uh, they'd like to see this uh, move forward quickly. Uh, they feel it's important to uh, create this kind of identity for the town through signage that will help attract tourism and, and bring new investment into the area. Uh, housing, of course, is very important for community development. Uh, these initiatives that the town has, en has engaged in already look to address uh, housing needs for low and moderate income people, as well as trying to encourage more housing downtown to create a, a greater vitality and bring more people into the area. A number of transportation projects are currently underway, uh, complete streets. Uh, I think you were aware the town recently submitted a $400,000 application for some sidewalk and pedestrian improvements under that program. Uh, the Crosstown Connect project is a, uh, a very innovative idea to uh, create uh, low-cost transportation services for, for employees uh, and people that are seeking commuter rail. Quite a number of open space and parks and recreation and, and arts initiatives the Aspet River Rail Trail, uh, currently under construction, will uh, pass through the downtown, bring in a lot of people and, and bring some renewed vitality to the area. The Veterans Memorial Park is, is a, uh, identified on this list, and it's one of the projects that we'll be applying for funding for. Um, it's sort of in a state of uh, decline, 
uh, but it's very important centerpiece. It's probably the most important open space in the downtown area, where, and it hosts a lot of venues, and as well as providing just sort of you know some quiet uh, uh, space to sit sit down and relax. Um, the Boys and Girls Club, of course, does important work in terms of uh, helping uh, provide services to to folks who need child care services so that they can continue to work. And then a couple of couple of cultural initiatives, the Cultural District, which was recently approved, and the Art Space Maynard Project. Uh, I think it's great that the town is seeking sort of the creative energy of, of, the, uh, of the artists in the area to um, help attract people to the area and, um, and show that uh, you know, the creative economy is alive and well here in, in Maynard. Uh, then uh, we go into the community development principles, and I was very pleased to see that on the wall here. You have them all listed, so that I think really shows the town's uh, formal <coughs> commitment to, to those principles, and so I wanted to highlight that. And then probably the most important part of this document are these priority projects. So this is a requirement for the town to identify in order what are the most uh, important projects the town has before it. And in fact, the state wants to be sure that the projects the town uh, is applying for in the CDBG application are in fact priority projects. Otherwise, the state would say, well, why are you asking us to fund projects which aren't your priorities? <coughs> so the first couple of projects are things that we are actually um, going forward with in, in this current application. So uh, those are up at the top of the list, I think, just to show the state that these are, in fact, the, the most important priorities. And at our EDC meeting, uh, we shifted a lot of these around, added a couple of new ones, uh, and tried to, to get them in some sort of order of priority. Uh, I'd certainly um, welcome your input into those if you think um, some are more important than others, or if we've missed any, uh, let us know. Uh, and then finally, uh, you know, I'd ask uh, after We've talked about this. If you have any questions or comments, that you take a vote to adopt the CDS. Uh, Andrew, did you want to add, or Bill, did you want to add anything to this discussion? No, uh, thank you, Bill. I think that was very thorough. Um, the, uh, you may be aware we applied for this grant last year and did not receive it, but we're very close. I think the improvements Bill made uh, this year are uh, ideally going to put us over the top. But so they have strengthened it. So if, if I'm following, we've got the document itself, which kind of lists a whole host of ongoing efforts within the town, as well right. as some priorities. And then we have the budget page of the packet, which mm -hmm. presumably is the highest of the high right. priorities. Correct. So one of my questions looking mm -hmm. over that, you know, the third line item is, of course, the accessible <coughs> curb ramps, which is about 154000 mm -hmm. as a combined line item. Right. Um, and we actually just got notice today that we were awarded the Mass DOT oh. grant oh, good. for complete streets of 150000 So I guess my first question would be, do we need to now kind of amend the budget priorities, keep that in play? Does that, is this in addition to more than, et cetera, would be one question. And then my second question is a bit kind of, um, you know, I'll kind of point it at, at Bill, but you may also know the answer, is that I'm guessing that as we look at the sort of detailed items that would be underneath the Veterans Memorial Park, kind of the list of items are those that came up from all the work that you did with the Community Outreach Program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, to answer your question about the Complete Streets Grant, it is um, for specific identified uh, intersections. Street intersections, okay. And, uh, Separate from those that are listed on on the CBD, CBD. Right now, uh, what we're doing is we, we just analyzed, um, or Bill's going to analyze the specific ramps and intersections. We have to go through them, and it may be that we have to switch some around. Okay. Um, but, but there's certainly more than, uh, than the 150 that we just got. Yeah, there's okay. more than we need for that. So it, it's possible that this grant may end up reflecting a different uh, ramp. But, because that our grant is specifically to those four. Yeah, the, to be clear, the Complete Treats grant is for specific projects. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, no, they're very um, specific. But where they overlap with the CDBG application, we will get the we'll dual have flexibility benefit. flexibility in the CBG mm -hmm. application to move it around. Mm -hmm. So as you can see on the, on the budget page, uh, we have um, three projects listed here, and we're also considering a fourth. But the Veterans Mem Memorial Park, as you mentioned, um, getting a, a uh, a lot of work done through this program in terms of lighting, some landscaping, 
uh, new sidewalks, um, and, uh, improvements to the performance area. Uh, the parking lot design would result in 100% design plan so that you could go out to bid to, to renovate that parking lot. <coughs> that was something that came up at the EDC meeting was to consider this as something more than just a parking lot, uh, more as a multi-use plaza where businesses that uh, back up onto the parking lot could open up sort of entrances into the, to that area and create more of a functional space and make it a community gathering place. So I think that kind of an idea of something that could, could be fleshed out in the design project. And then the curb ramps, as, as Bill mentioned, we're, we're looking at, I think, 32 specific curb ramps to make those handicapped accessible. Uh, architectural barrier removal projects is a high priority in the CDBG program, so it's eligible. And it's a way to both combine the town's uh, goals of improving accessi uh, accessibility for the handicapped as well as the complete streets project to make streets more pedestrian friendly. Um, the, the next page is really just a budget summary out of the online uh, application process showing that we're applying for a total of $673,377 with a town match for $180,000, uh, which includes $30,000 from uh, uh, the CPA fund and $150,000 from previous CDBG loan repayments. Uh, the state likes to see that the town, town spend those monies before asking for new money, so it's really showing a very sizable match, over 25% of the, of the total cost. So we would take a previously granted CDBG approved grant, yes. take that and dump it into, yes. lack of a better word, right. dump it into this. I do, I do have a question sure. for you. Um, time flies, but I think it was probably two and a half, three years ago now, uh, maybe less, <clears throat> that there was uh, a series of meetings with a consultant relative to um, uh, Veterans Memorial Park, um, where they talked about, you know, the revitalization and rebuilding and whatever. And the number that was put on that project at that time was much higher than the number that we're seeing here. Mm -hmm. So what's changed and what does this new project look like mm -hmm. in comparison to what we were talking about, you know, two mm -hmm. and a half years ago? Mm. Um, and I know we're doing, this is really considered a phase one, so it's been split up into phases. Okay, so would we then be committing the community to, you know, because that was like a million dollars plus, mm -hmm. would we be committing the community to having to do phase two and three? That, no, 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 hopefully you would, but uh, there's no commitment. Uh, for you to do that, it's at your own discretion. You wouldn't have half a wall <laughs> or anything like, I mean, I, you know, uh, no, I'm, I'm being somewhat right. serious. I know, I know. <laughs> but no, each of the, so this is a, s a discrete project that we're applying for. Mm -hmm. So it results in some lighting, some new street trees, uh, okay. reseeding, okay. improvements to the performance area. So all of those so this is not the reconfiguration of the of the monuments and everything else. I don't believe so. That's separate. Yeah. And and uh, more to the point of David's question, the um, that original consultation resulted in options that totaled over a million dollars. What we had settled on, what Bill's referring to as Phase One, is a much smaller project or less expensive. Alternatives were chosen. Uh, there are more things we could do, but. It wasn't that we took a million dollar project and squashed it yeah. down. It's that we and chose parts <coughs> that added up to what this just, is. Just so accounting. my inquiry is, mm -hmm. is clear, I'm not saying I object to mm -hmm. the application for the grant. I think it's a good grant to apply mm -hmm. for, and I think we should move forward with it. I just want to make sure that we're not putting ourselves in a situation where, oh boy, we've just, through applying for this grant, have committed ourselves to no. a million dollar project okay. that yeah. we don't have. No. So. Okay. Okay. Just need to move to apply for the grant. Is that the only outstanding piece? Uh, we need approval of the CDS. And then one other question, if yes, I may. Yes, sure. Um, when we applied for previous CBDG grant, mm -hmm. I don't remember having a hearing like this. Is this is this unique to this for some reason? Uh, I was here last year for the hearing. Oh, we did have one. Okay, right. I just don't recall it. And, and I'm sorry that I don't recall. No, I'm sure okay. it was just as wonderful you know, a presentation. Else, were you? Yes, I was with Dan Cahill. Okay. Uh, we were very close last year. We I actually, remember that, that we applied, but I just don't yeah. remember the hearing. We actually had the same score as another town that got funded, but we lost on a tiebreaker. 
uh, which was unfortunate. So they ran out of money before they could get to manage the project. Was it a coin flip, or was it like something <laughs> particular in our application that made the other one more attractive? What happens is the state assigns something called a need score mm -hmm. based on a number of demographic factors. And Maynard, so the highest <laughs> score you can get is 10, and Maynard's a 5. So you start out with a 5-point handicap. So it's very difficult to overcome that. So you have to really write a perfect application so you don't lose any more points in order to, to get funded. Gotcha. Thanks. Okay. Did we get any consulting fees back to reuse this year? <laughs> no? um, we're reusing the existing unrestricted CDBG, actually restricted uh, CDBG funds to pay for the consult. It's pretty short money, too. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> So what well, there's only one of you this year. <laughs> <laughs> Part of it. <laughs> two for the price, or one for the price of two, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so uh, we will need a vote from the board to submit the application. There is a signature page here that I guess I would ask the board to vote the chairman to sign the form when, we, we, when we're completely satisfied with what we're submitting. I think we're very close now. Yeah, there the might be a few time. tweaks to it. So. Just March if you could 2nd. authorize the, the board to sign the application, and then we'll get it in by March 2nd. March 2nd's coming up quick. All right. Well, the motion that we would have to make would be to move to accept and approve the application for the Community Development Block Grant as shown. Second. Are there any public comments in this hearing? Nope. There's not. It's not a public hearing. It this is a, is a, it this is a, is a public hearing. Yes. yes. This is a public hearing, yeah. Yes. So there is public comments. Sure. If anyone has any? Oh, well, you're going to go up there because of the microphone. Sure. People complain they can't hear from way in the back. You heard me though, right? Yeah, we heard you. Keep talking to me. Um, Bill Cranshaw, Mockingbird Lane. Um, is there something that shows the work being covered by the Veterans Memorial Park um, application? Yes, I believe it's, is it online, Andrew, or it is? Mm -hmm. All the Veterans Memorial Park documents are on the town of Maynard planning page? Yes, but the specific components that are in this application, is there something that's going in with that application? That yeah, there have? is. I've, I've actually got sort of, I don't have a, the drawing, but I've got the, the budget that um, we are using. Um, this shows the, the specific elements uh, and their cost that was developed by uh, Claire Batchelder, who oh. designed the, the park. Okay, well, we yeah. also have the architectural designs that are they're ready to go out to bid right. once we have the funding, and that was that was what the first consultant did two years ago. It's that document from the Veterans Memorial Park project from 2015, 2016. Okay, that's the cornerstone of the application. And then mm -hmm. element number two, the the parking lot. Mm -hmm. That's just mm -hmm. 112 grand for design. Yes. There's no construction. There's no improvements. There's no anything. Correct. It's engineering fees. Is there a budget for the project? That would be developed as or part of design. Is there a budget for the project? I, I don't know. I don't have anything at the moment. But that's the, the cost of doing the design work. There's a survey, uh, plans and specs, public outreach, um, you know, cost estimation. So there's a fair amount to it that's involved. Okay. And then the final question is there's 30,000 for program delivery and 87,000 for mm -hmm. general admin. Sure. Who gets that money? So the program delivery would be primarily costs that would go to town consultants or town staff. For example, the town engineer would supervise construction, so that cost would be covered under program admin. But uh, that could be reimbursement of in-kind town services? Uh, well, the state will will pay to have that work done to make sure that it complies with town standards and uh, is done according to the actual plans that were, were prepared. Um, so that's called a, a program, de program delivery cost. The general admin is a couple of ways the town can go. It could hire its own staff to manage the program or it could hire consultants to do that. This assumes that rather than hiring staff, which then would have to be laid off at completion of the project, that an outside consultant would be hired who has expertise in managing this kind of a program. And it is very heavy in terms of paperwork and uh, requ uh, bureaucratic requirements. So 
I think it's uh, wise to bring in outside experts who have, have done that before and know how to handle all of the, uh, uh, the paperwork. There are things like there are different reporting requirements. Uh, there's conditions that have to be addressed in the grant. Uh, there's financial management, of course, to make sure that the money is spent properly. Uh, coordination with town staff. Uh, and then uh, making sure that you know, the contract documents that go out uh, satisfy uh, state and federal requirements for, uh, for various components like fair housing and equal opportunity and, um, and wage rates and things of that sort. So it's a significant cost, but the, the grant uh, state gives the community 18 months. So that's um, uh, something like in the order of less than $1,000 a week to hire somebody to manage the grant. Okay, and just a slight follow-up. Is there an opportunity for the work to be done or reimbursed to a current town employee like the DPW director or the town administrator or town council or whatever? Or is that not Typically, no, I, that's, you could do it. I think the state would look at it very carefully. Generally, services are bid out uh, for completion. Uh, so, for example, you'd hire a contractor to, to do the park work. You'd hire an engineering firm to do the basin design hire another contract to do the ramp project. <coughs> Certainly, uh, the DPW would, could provide in-kind services in terms of um, assistance, technical assistance and review of work, but typically they don't get reimbursed uh, as part of the grant. Bill, is there a yeah. driver that you're going to with this that you're just concerned about? Do you have a question about the overall percentage that you see? No, no, I'm not or? concerned about the amount. I'm just curious if the town can, you know. <laughs> Recoup some of its direct costs. Well, I guess part of it's like we wouldn't be doing it. We won't be doing it without the grant, right? Yeah, but it's always work for the staff, to get. no matter what. Mm -hmm. so, and it some is. programs are more generous about <coughs> compensating for that than others. But this, mm -hmm. this apparently has, you know, more strict rules. So, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Any questions, you guys? David? No. Nope. Okay. Melissa? No. Good. Now you expect us to vote? Yes. Who's got a second for your motion? Yeah, you need to second. No, David seconded. Oh, did you second? Oh, right. Oh, okay. You haven't seconded. Yeah, David seconded. <laughs> Thank it. you. Sorry. Yep. So all those in favor of the grant application? All those in favor of the grant? Yes. <laughs> I just want an application. Two votes. Two votes. Okay. Well, thank you for your time this evening. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Fingers crossed this year we don't have a tiebreaker. I know. It's a flat out win. <laughs> right. Like the bobsled race yesterday in the Olympics with a flat tie. <laughs> <laughs> with that, at 8 13, okay. we will close the public hearing. Thank you. <laughs> have a good evening. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, too. Thank, thank you, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Where were we? Hey Street. We were back. I, I had a quick question, and I just wanted to, and I don't want to make this a big, long, drawn-out thing, but uh, Jim, do you remember if that meeting that you were talking about with the consultants, was that the one where people left here with the instruction that it was permissible to put their sump pump into the... Uh, that, was, that was a separate... That, so that, was, that was a that different was a meeting. meeting, yes. Okay. Yeah, that, All right. right. Um, the DEP was involved with that. The DEP I, you're right. Yes, they, they were. Okay. They had made a decision statement that, that as long as the water was clean, which it, which it is, that, um, you know, that you know, they didn't have an issue with it. The issue yeah. relative to some pumps is, is that there needs to be a, an assertion that it's not polluted. That if somebody is, if somebody is drawing water, uh, from a basement and their heating system is oil. There needs to be pr protection in there so that you're not pumping the potential of, of a spill. An environmental hazard, that's, yep. you know, that's the whole thing uh, on that. But that was, a, that was a separate meeting okay. right there. All right. But that just shows that there have been a series of meetings on this issue. But, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, two things. First of all, I never expected this to be done tomorrow. I know how infrastructure projects work, community requirements, the expenses associated with it. I'm just not expecting it to be broomed away 
you know, so that we have to come in here again next year and start all over again. The other issue, the other issue I wanted to talk about, as I presented in, in that letter, there was that major sewer problem they had up there on Waltham Street last year. That street was dug up for two weeks to, to saw. It was an emergency. The sewer line blew up in, 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 the, in the guy's house on the <coughs> corner. Okay, so the town ended up paying to rebuild the guy's basement. There was two weeks of, of rebuilding that sewer line in there. They had to pull the contractor off of the, the rail trail. That had to cost some money, okay? That, that wasn't, that wasn't a, a surprise. This, this was all known before the fact. I mentioned it as a pre-existing condition during the development public hearings in the planning board downstairs. And that was on the record. I made the statement to the engineer, and he took the position that he would run a camera. Not He didn't say he'd run a camera. He said he'd check it out. And I don't think it got checked out. Now, look, they did a great job. The job got done. But hey, it cost us money. And there's a reason it's so expensive to live in this town. And that's one of them. And you can dismiss people who come in here, who've been here for 50 years, casually, okay, as if they don't know anything. And I've seen it happen. Well, I'm not dismissing you casually. I don't, I don't know who's yeah. dismissing, you know, if anyone's dismissed anybody at this point, but I can tell you that, you know, that particular problem has been discussed several times every year since I've been here. And Mr. Marshall's come in several times, and I know that, um, you know, uh, prior to Aaron, uh, Chris Okafor had dealings with th that piece of property, those pieces of property, that area, and Aaron's been up in that area. And the other problem that Maynard has is, and we talk about it as a part of the reason why the rates are going up, because every year we have several surprises. Although you may not think it's a surprise that something breaks in our water or our infrastructure, Right? It's, it's a surprise when it actually happens. Right. No, we know what's going to happen. It's, it's a crisis. We know it, that's right. We're in it's a crisis. The town is in a... So I'm not going to interrupt you, so don't interrupt okay. me. All right. Because I haven't interrupted you yet. Fine. Okay, so the town is in a crisis situation with our infrastructure. We all know that. Everybody in this room knows that. Everybody in this town knows that. We have a, a serious crisis on our hands, and we're dealing with it. So to suggest that, you know, that wasn't a surprise, it is a surprise because... Because tomorrow it's going to be somewhere down on somewhere down on the other end of Main Street, which which has had several breaks in the past year and a half. Two days ago it was someone on Glen Road, which who expected that? <coughs> they dug that road up for two days because of a water main break. I mean, so throughout town, everywhere in town we're having problems, and 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 Glen Road is a new area, but this it's still a surprise is going to happen. This I know, and Ron has sat through how many of these hearings, Ron, in these discussions, Bill, when you were selectman, was it a problem then? I mean, the people in this room, everyone in this room understands the problem and the, the nature of the problem we have and the seriousness of it. But, you know, you, in, without the money and without the funds to start from one end of 117 and go to the other and replace all the pipe and then go to all the tributaries and all the different streets in town that need it, we have, we're dealing with them as they come up one at a time. One break at a time, that's how we're fixing them. That's the only way we can do it. Right. We're, we're cameraing pipes, right. we're, we're, right. Right. we're doing that stuff. So it's not like it's not being worked on. And I understand your pain and your suffering up in that area with the water table and the complaints of that stuff. But I've, I, it's been being dealt with since we've been here. On an ongoing basis, there's, there's different things taking place and there's different people looking at it. So I don't know how we're not you know, looking at it. Uh, it's not gonna happen tomorrow. But, but you know, we've had the DEP up there, we've had our consultants up there, we've had you know, the town engineers, we have everybody up in that area working on this problem. And, and every time they come back, they're doing, you know, they, they fix one thing and another thing breaks, but it still, it still ends up going back to every time we fix something, we still have st uh, stuck with that rising water table. So what do we do? You know, we're gonna, we, I don't know what we do, but I know one thing, it's gonna cost us an awful lot of money to do it when we get to that point. But I don't, I don't know, we find out what happened with those three choices. I know we went to go in one direction, and one of the directions was we cameraed the entire length of pipe, didn't we? From one end of that street to the other, down to down to um, down to Vic's place, down to Douglas, yeah, and down to Powder Mill. That's right. Yeah. So we went that length and, and did all that work, and and we made some repairs and we made some changes. I know we've done that. 
Maybe, maybe we can, as we were, we, were, we were heading in the direction before, to see if we could get Aaron maybe to get a, 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 an update for us where we are. And I think maybe it's more appropriate that you actually talk with Aaron in a separate session, and, and if it has to come back to the board, it comes back to the board. But I don't think taking up more board time on this is going to, I mean, we, we, in full agreement, we want you to have your problem solved. I disagree with the assertions of some things, but that's neither here nor there. I think the logical next step is to talk to the person who's in charge of the water department, see what they're actually, what they're planning on doing and what they have actually done that maybe you're not aware of, and then we'll get a report back from that whether we need to continue. But I mean, to have you come frustrated is not going to help you. It's certainly not going to help us. I would rather hear from the person who knows the most complete data set. I don't have any objection to that, but, but I will state that we've been going through the DPW you know, since before Aaron was here. I, I, can't, I can't imagine how sick of it you are. Yeah. Pardon me? I said I can't imagine how sick of doing it you are. And I'm, being, and I'm, and I'm saying that in all serious and, and sympathetically. I can't imagine how, how, you know, how sick of going through these processes you guys are without any answer. But it's not for lack of attention from the town. I know that. And, and that's part of the frustration that we have. Right, and, and, and I, you know, so I, what, what's the answer? The answer is the first answer is, you know, let's meet with Aaron. If, if you need other people in the room other than yourself and Aaron, you know, you want one of us to sit in on the meeting so we understand as a board what's going on, that's fine too. But it's not for lack of effort on the town. It's not for lack of effort on Aaron's part, certainly, because Aaron has never, since he's been here, not put effort into every Aaron, problem in Aaron discussion is, that's come Aaron up. Aaron is incredibly responsive. So, every time I go, every time I have a dealing with Aaron, he's responsive, he gives... He gives me what I'm asking for, so that, so that's you know that's a whole different thing, but but the point is 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 that when I got that letter, the message I got from the letter is we can't do anything for you, okay. and after all of the effort that we just talked about, all of the effort and the expense say, again that you know the town pays for this stuff, you know you're saying that you know they're running cameras through and they're making repairs here and there, the town's paying for this stuff, okay? It's not it's not no. great, and none of it is cheap. You know. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, that, and that's and that sewer that sewer repair on Waltham Street was not cheap either. We no, know. it was not. Okay. We we got that bill. Right. I mean, and it's just a matter of, you know, we get with Aaron and see what you know, see where we're at right now, and, and bring us all up to speed, and then try to tackle it again in, in a different way if we have to. I Sounds mean, like a plan. All right. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So we'll thank you. We'll get with Aaron. All right. You arrange that. I will. I'll um, have Aaron and uh, reach out to the Hayes Street neighborhood, the contact list we have, if there's specific information, or to call a meeting, or at least have some sort of a summary brought here for the next meeting. Okay. Um, so thank you. Before we started the discussion, David had seconded the motion to. Um, it's been a while, so maybe I'll reread it. <laughs> <laughs> Take away my second? No, you can still have the second, <laughs> but I'll just reread the I'll just reread the, the original motion because it's been a while, and it was quick and sweet, and it was <coughs> to accept the list of correspondences as shown, A through K. Mr. Gavin seconded it. We had some discussions about the bridges and some of the others, and then we got into the discussion about the Hay Street area. So I guess we're done with that. So all those in favor of accepting the correspondence? Thank you. Thank you all. Consent agenda consists of one item, one day permit for the um, the lake parade. Lily parade, yeah. So it's move to accept and approve the consent agenda item as shown. A. Second. I'll second it. Thank you. Any discussion about the Lily parade? Nope. All those in favor? So I. So we got a note. We talked about this, um, about the parade going forward. Once we, when we approve, once we approve a parade, that we would send an, an informational um, email or something to the EDC or whoever in town, so that those folks um, in, doing business in town might be more aware of it than they may have been in the past. And if they want to do something or be involved, they can take an opportunity to you know, plan for any eventuality that they might see um, as it affects their business or if they want to get involved in any of these type of things. So we'll do that instead of an email heads up. That's, that's that we do a standard operating procedure? Uh, yeah, we're going to try. Okay. We're going to try it. Give it a shot. Next up are the two affordable housing trust appointments. One is just a renewal, right, Bill? Just renewed? Tech. No, no. Um, Bob Larkin was on the initial attempt. 
Yeah, no but, longer eligible. That's right. Okay. So there's two. Uh, the first one is um, Mr. Cranshaw, a move to approve William Cranshaw to the Affordable Housing Trust as representative from the Maynard Housing Authority for the term expiring June 30th, 2019. We have a second. Second. So what you're on, you're on the Housing Authority Board? Yes, I'm on the Housing Authority and they voted a few months ago to make me their uh, appointee to this trust. You missed the meeting in other words. No, nah, I was there. <laughs> and, uh, I was so, so why is Lock, Bob Larkin not He's not, he lives in Stone. Oh, okay, all right. Anybody want to grill the witness? <laughs> all right, all those in favor? Thank you, Final. And then the second is, um... oh my God, I can't stop you now, huh? <laughs> Get away. So I, I don't know. There's no motion with this one Move back to in approve. mind. Same thing. So are we going to read the same one? Yeah. Move to approve. Right? Move to approve uh, Donna Dodson as an at large appointee to the Affordable Housing Trust. Second and older version. As a representative from the. No, without that. Part. No, without, yeah, just so, right? Yep. An at large appointment. With term expiring June 30th. Where did you, did you see? I don't see that. It's on, on, it's on the line. agenda. On the paper. Paper. 1950. Yeah, with the time. Because I can see notes on this. All right, thanks. Move to approve Donna Dodson to the Affordable Housing Trust with a term expiring June 30th, 2019. Do we have a second? Second. Cut off or something. Thanks, Terrence. Sure. Any discussion? Any questions for Donna? Hey. You're going mad, Donna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna have any free time? <laughs> Still going to vote for it, so it could, yeah. could go, all, could go right. negative. It could go either way. <laughs> all, right, those, all those in favor of the appointment. Thank you very much, and thank you both for uh, thank you. continuing to um, volunteer for the town. We do and your slips it. will be in the town clerk's office tomorrow morning. Chief. Now, a discussion with the fire chief. Is that guy in the chairs? Yep, yep. <coughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Chief. Thank you for your time. Welcome. I'm not going to take very much time. I just, uh, a couple things I wanted to go over. Um, I sent both of the items that I want to discuss to you in advance, so hopefully you had a chance to read it. Uh, the first thing I, I wanted to do was just kind of update you and show you our strategic plan. Um, that's an internal document that we use to kind of guide us for the next five or so years. When I was first appointed here in 2012, that was one of the charges of the, the then Board of Selectmen was to develop a strategic plan. So this one here just builds off of that. Um, there's very new that's, uh, very little that's new in, the, in this plan. It just kind of builds off things that we've already done. So um, in, unless there's any discussion, I just wanted to let you know, show it to you. Again, it's an internal training uh, planning document that's used to help guide us for the next four to five years and beyond. So some of the highlights, you know, obviously we're, we're still looking to seek um, accreditation. That's a big thing for us. And the other thing that we're seeking to do that's a big item for us is eventually transition to advanced life support. I don't know if we'll be able to do that in the next five years, but those are our, our big, big items. Is, so advanced life support, that would replace the, um, the advanced life support we see from Amazon? Correct. What's I mean, obviously, you don't have the exact. What's that? What does that cost in terms of equipment and people? Well, it's going to be considerable. It's probably the training alone is going to be probably thirty thousand dollars per person. Uh, equipment is a lot of the same equipment that we already have, but additionally, it's going to be some advanced life support equipment for pushing drugs, uh, cardiac arrest monitors, things that you know, big ticket items. So we'll. That's part of the process is to vet that all out and yeah. see if we can afford to do that. Sorry, is it would it be would it be with current firefighters or it would be new hires? Well, the plan is to do it with current firefighters, um, and then you know, if we don't have enough people that are interested in doing it, then obviously we'd have to look outside. But um, again, we're going to look at that and see if we have to change our staffing model to do it, or if it's feasible to do it with the current staffing model. 
and use in in-house firefighters. A lot of it depends on what the state's going to let us do too. In our medical director, um, you know, one of the requirements now is that you have two paramedics on an ambulance, which, in my opinion, is really foolish because one of them has to drive. But that's another story. So we would have to apply for a permanent waiver. So we would only have to train four firefighters initially, and then work to eight. So there's a lot that goes into it, and uh, but it is on our radar. That's probably the biggest thing that we're looking at doing in the next four to five years, probably longer, to be honest with you. I assume there'd be a cost analysis associated with it. Where we oh, yeah. It. yeah. Yeah, it's not going to be cheap. I can tell you that right now. Well, just do you think it would save money at the, at, at the end of the in day? In the long run, yeah. yes. But it's a short-term expense that you know, you're going you're to make yeah. it up in the long run. Um, you know, the, biggest, the biggest issue I have is service delivery. And we have a great service with Pro now. They do a fantastic job, but they are a private company, and you never know how viable they are in the long run. So that's my only concern. Um, in the long run, you're going to see more and more organizations in the area go to that model. Acton went to it, and that was a big, big blow to Pro. So what my fear is that you know, if Concord or another big community decides they're going to go ALS, Pro is not going to stick around for Maynard. So that's something that we have to really consider down the road. Hmm. So, any other questions on this? Okay, again, it's just an internal planning planning document for us mostly. One question on the, st on the staffing, just uh, sure. Chief, have you increased the amount of call firefighters lately, or is that just is that always, we've always had this many, or no? We've we've, in we we've increased call firefighters. We had one when I got here. We have eight right now. Yeah. Um, part of the issue is. They don't have training. So we use them basically when we have a recall for all firefighters to come back, we call out a box. We use them at that time. But other than that, we don't we haven't used them for, for much. A lot of them don't have training. We've actually taken two of the call firefighters that did have training and moved them up to permanent firefighters. So which is actually part of the goal of having that program revised revived. So And so both Jerry and Pete as part of their you know yep. retirement. They stayed program. on. Both of them stayed on, so we use them whenever we can. But okay. the other thing that um, I wanted to put in front of you is a change in the fee schedule. Um, to the best of our knowledge, it hasn't been looked at in at least 10 years. It certainly hasn't been looked at in the time I've been here. So what these fees are are anything that we have to get a permit, people have to get a permit from from the fire department or a plans review or for a sprinkler system or a fire alarm system. So what I did was I did a, a, um, a survey with the area communities, and basically we tried to take the average. We didn't go on the high end, but we, we found that a number of our fees were, were lower than other communities. So we've adjusted it to kind of reflect more what we do plus what other communities are doing. Uh, some people don't give out as many permits as we do for whatever reason, uh, but... So this reflects what I think we should be charging for permits and different services that we offer. Um, like currently, we don't necessarily charge for plans review. Other communities do. I know the town of Concord charges a considerable amount for plans review. So that was just one example. Um, go ahead. Do you know what the, um, as we look at it, do you know what the um, annual impact would be if we put these fees in place? No, it really, to be honest with you, it wouldn't be that much. I don't think it would be more than five or six thousand dollars. Okay. <coughs> but it is more money that we we would have for the general fund. So the well, fire department else? doesn't keep these; it's going to the general fund. Yeah, well, you're also being paid for a variety of service. I mean, there's nothing wrong. Right. With, there's nothing wrong with so, charging for its actual service, just like everybody else does. Sure. A lot of these things we don't give out every year. Some of them are every couple, two or three years. Um, but one of the, you know, we do a lot of plans reviews, and we really haven't charged for that at all. And it does take a considerable amount of time. I'm assuming the assumption is, still, is, Chief, I'm sorry. Go ahead, I'm sure. sorry, but on, on, oh, okay, and this one it will be plans required the, in the new fee. Okay. Yep. Sorry, got it. So there's nothing different. We're not doing anything different with our approach for how we handle any of these interactions on this fee schedule than any other towns. So an apple's an apple in this case, right? Yeah, some, some of them don't have as many apples and some have more. Yeah, but so. each apple is identical to what, yeah. So we're not providing less of a service. Nope. All right. Nope. How many of these are annual? Just, there's only a few that say annual. Are they, is that it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. There's only a few. That's so why the impact is. These are all just mostly one-time fees. I want to put a new kitchen hood in 
So it would be seventy-five dollars to inspect the for the five hundred inspector. Yep. Is that residential or commercial? Commercial. So I don't have a, a question about the rates. I had a chance to review them earlier. Thank you for sending them as early as you did. My question is actually more for you, Andrew, and kind of like for Bill around clear the clear gov contract that we'll have coming on board soon. Because I know like we often will get the question on as the board about what towns do we pick for comparisons. So am I correct in understanding that one of the benefits of clear gov is that will kind of help us come up with almost like a single profile for us to use as a town so that regardless of what either fee structure or service structure or anything like that that we would be looking at, we would be as a town kind of looking at a uniform set of comparisons. Is that part of their value add? So the, the clear gov software will have all 351 cities and towns in it at some basic level of data, but then the subscribers like ourselves will have more data. Mm -hmm. In terms of choosing your comps, that's custom, as you just described. We can say these are the towns we'd like to compare ourselves to, but you as an end user can pick any towns you choose as a comparison. And there's a value to that because you, know, you might want to compare yourself to your neighbors or to towns that have similar road miles or similar number of residents. There's a lot of different factors that you want to compare against. They're not always the same exact communities. As we move ahead with that, and I don't want to not to, and again, it doesn't has nothing to do with the topic immediately at hand, but I think it would be helpful for us to kind of think through what that would look like. Sure. Because I, I think there's a, a perception sometimes when we're coming up with fees or when we're coming up with budget estimates or when we're looking at what should the answer be that we end up with every time we have the conversation it, it, the, a perception view that we're cherry picking sure. the communities that we choose to look at so um, maybe that's something that once that's in place you know as, as you it's, work it's with being the being implemented as we speak will probably cool. be live in the next two weeks but just so we can get to that point where it's like okay if we're looking at this set of questions these are parameters that that set of departments are going to use or something Absolutely. like that. Cool. Thank you for that. Great example. Lunenburg's same population as Maynard. Mm -hmm. No water and sewer department. They're all wells and septic. Right. 25 square miles. You know, they have a whole different profile for uh, all that sort of thing. Yeah. So, cool. so I just have a, it's another side to it. We have over the past couple of years probably done five or six of these, four or five of these different departmental charges where we've changed the rates. How many are left? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like how many, what, what departments are left that we haven't, can we find, try and take a peek and see what, you know, which we haven't changed in a significant amount of time? Uh, we absolutely can. I believe um, internally our, our policy would be to do an annual review, not necessarily bring changes to the board annually. Um, I can say that that's probably not done consistently, but in the four years I've been here, uh, the fees have been reviewed several times internally. Um, we brought fees to the board in the fall, uh, these fire fees. We did not bring electrical changes in the fall. Uh, the electrical inspector said that they were appropriate. Uh, just before he retired uh, from the fire service, he indicated that he might have a change of heart about that and may want to have those uh, so uh, I would suggest we perhaps uh, require them biannually and maybe bring them in as a package. Uh, that might be a little bit more conducive for this board to review. But it includes uh, things like the <coughs> alcohol uh, licensing, uh, everything that happens in OMS. Okay. I just, we just seem to be doing them one at a time here and there, so no worries. On a semi-regular schedule would be better for future boards too, right? So they're coming up on a more regular basis. At sure. least once for each board cycle of three years, right? If you did it biannually, I think that's a per perfect idea. Yep. Okay. So I just recommend that, you know, if we're going to implement the new fee schedule, that we do it for July 1. That's a good clean cutoff. It's the new fiscal year. It gives us a chance to advertise that on our website. So there's no rush, but. Do we have to do, I mean, are we able to vote on this tonight, or do we have to post this to the public first? Uh, it's a it's a board vote. You can okay. do it tonight. You can wait two weeks. You can. Gotcha. I don't. Does anybody want to take a take you know, put it up for the next agenda and take a look at it or ask any questions or you know anything like that or? I looked it over. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. 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 I'm just I'm just checking. Just checking yeah. with y'all. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm okay if we vote tonight. I don't think there's anything 
I mean, the impact is minimal, even if, I mean, the, the biggest increase is pretty minimal anyway. Yeah. And they're like one-timers. Just any motion would have to state an effective date of the... Yeah, I would do July 1, but... Yeah. Okay. Let's see. There is... So um, the motion would be that we move to approve fees as presented for immediate adop adoption for the town. Of, no, so no, not immediate. It yeah, would no, be. So that's right. So I'm just reading. I'm just reading the one in front of me. So I yeah. um, the motion that we move to approve the fire department permit and fee schedule as presented effective July 1st, 2018. Second. We had a little discussion. All those in favor? Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. I know we should have really grilled you on page 12 of that strategic plan. There's plenty of time for that. <laughs> All right. It's the fifth time I've closed this darn thing. All right. So, next up. Uh, that's special town meeting articles, and um, as part of that, um, I got the e this email this afternoon. I saw it sometime this afternoon, late morning, um, from uh, Don Rowe and the Finance Committee, and they have a bunch of questions related to some of these things. Um, that doesn't mean we can't do what we have to do, but I guess we get back to them with the answers to the, the things that we have answers to. We have some answers, sure. I had a question too, in conjunction with one of Don's question on the marijuana license. So Don mentions the three percent community impact fee that we can include, um, and it not being addressed specifically in the warrant item. Isn't there also another three percent fee for a local tax that we can impose as well for a total of six percent? So that was the genesis of the question. The the um, control the warrant article is for the three percent tax. Okay. but does not include the 3% impact fee. I'm not familiar with that, and I sent an email to Kate Federoff, our attorney, who's been specializing on this topic uh, uh, today after seeing Don's email. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I don't have an answer on whether or not that's something that the FinCom heard about. Maybe it's a rumor. Maybe, it's, maybe they're misunderstanding the rules, or if indeed there is that impact tax and we can impose it she had talked about it when she presented to us okay um, i don't think it had been finalized at that point it was in discussion i believe um but there was a big push to have that three percent impact fee for a limited period of time to help encourage towns to adopt the legislation locally um so at this point because the warrants closed it would have to be uh brought up on the floor on the 26th or added to the annual town meeting or special town meeting in may but we could impose an impact fee, I believe, after the fact. And I think that might be, and at, at part of what I'm, because I know Melissa and I have kind of got, had separate, separately or been on the same link of emails with Bill tied to some questions that have come in from the town. And I get, and part of this too is like, what has to be decided when and with what authorities by whom. So I also, when I saw that, I, I couldn't recall whether that was something that we have the option as the, board that will be licensing it, whether that can come up in part of that or whether that has to be done at the, this front end. Because I know part of why we're doing this special warrant article now is to be in accordance with having the legislation in place by the time they're starting to take applications in. And I don't recall whether or not that secondary piece of the 3% community impact is something that we could take up later. Well, later or if, it, if you're correct and it's like a fee like the fire fees that you guys uh, as a board can impose, right? as opposed to the tax, which needs the town meeting vote. So mm -hmm. that may be the distinction that it doesn't need to be on the bylaw. Right. And that's what, I, I don't have the answer back from Kate yet, and I'm not familiar with it myself. Yeah, because I think, I mean, my personal concern with it is I just want to make sure we don't miss out on that, because if we're going in this direction with the marijuana laws, we want to capitalize as much as possible. That's the whole point of doing it. So, you know, we don't want to miss out on another 3% we could get. Even if it's only for a few years. Right, right. I mean, that could be huge. Yep. So um, Don Rowe's other questions, um, 
Some of them were just uh, some clerical things. Mm -hmm. uh, the warrant article, the control B, mm -hmm. which you may see as uh, article two, um, needed to be edited to say uh, it references sections one and two and not just section one. Mm -hmm. So we made those types of edits um, along the way. Some of them had actually been made before Don pointed them out to us, but the versions he was looking at were the older edits. So that was B and F. He had questions like that about editing. He had some questions about the elder tax, and we referred him to Cheryl Kane, who was the person who brought it uh, forward. It's being sponsored by the board, um, but I didn't want to uh, offer an opinion on which question on that. was that I what mean, is yeah, it? I believe the that's control D. numbers the control, control numbers and D. The four article, control D article four. or yeah. article yeah. four control D control D four. yeah article four either way you ha whichever way you have it in front of you so that I didn't know the answer to his inquiry about what's all weird to me though is that wasn't David when did you first bring that up didn't you bring that up at annual town meeting last year no uh, brought it up here and okay. it was um, you know what's driving it it's just an uh, it's an optional it's a, thing it's an yeah. option that allows us to uh, give potentially some breaks to some seniors that are in need um, through a voluntary People program opt in, so. yeah. yeah so this was this was that this was a new it's not new. It's not new. It's, but it's something yeah. that we hadn't adopted before. Correct. But it's in mass law. Right. That mass, provides yeah. that we can adopt it. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. So yeah, so there's, I mean, there's definitely discussion in the minutes. What's about driving it. it is there's no specific other than trying to find avenues to help those who need some help. So is that the answer that? you wish me to provide to the, like the yeah, FinCom uh, is asking the question and it's in John's email it's like a, we have some questions about this he didn't elaborate so I didn't want to just make an assumption about I what he was asking. I see him on occasion personally I can speak to him but uh, I think if the board wants to send a message if everybody's on board it can just be what's you know an answer to what's driving it it's just taking advantage of an opportunity to find ways to help those who well, need some. Yeah I think we ought to send them a copy of the the um the statute. Chapter 60, Section 3D, because when you read this, it makes it seem um, a lot like the uh, water sewer discount program where you just sign up and get it. This is not that. Correct. This is, this is a, a great deal different than that, and I think that and that was our discussion, and that's why we adopted this, so it suggested that we donation. adopt it, because it yeah. was completely different. It's it's a you know much higher standard of proof of eligibility and everything else involved, so I think that's part of the part of the issue. You know, you you actually have to not just walk in and sign up and get the get the check. You have to actually apply and do it. And we talked about, um, you know, I believe if my memory serves, we talked about um, providing assistance to people who might need to sign up and, and helping them to get through that process at some point. Yep, that was kind of the discussion that. You know, we could help to identify people who qualify if when in you know help through the process. And because we talked, I know we talked about um, you know, a lot of people being of a certain age and a lot of people in general who just you know are not want to um, raise their hand for help. So we talked about a way to um, help identify people who may be in need of this program um, in Maynard. So that's that was the driver, but that was the discussion. And it's not a, a giveaway. It's clearly a, a needs-based thing, that, but a, with a much higher threshold. And of it's us. also generated so by voluntary similar donations. To the, uh, so, so, yeah. Similar to the veterans. This is uh, a voluntary thing. Voluntary donations. Yeah, yeah. You check off on your yeah. taxes where it goes. Yeah. Like, okay. I want to add a dollar and then, here. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it takes a long payers. time to build up right, a, yeah. a fund that yeah. makes any sense. That's why, if you recall, there was an effort, there was a request to possibly put in seed money. We didn't vote for that. didn't put the seed money in. So that's out. So it's just really just an, an effort to try to build up a fund to help people who are in need. And in, in, in terms of the uh, verification of the need, that's similar to what we do with like for the veterans uh, tax deduction. There's a few of them yeah. that we have. And there is a, there, the state law requires a committee to be created that basically reviews all of the applications and awards, quote unquote, the, uh, the, the, the grant to whoever is most deserving or. That's just confusing with their questions because it's sure. all in the warrant. Yeah, it's and because and, yeah, and, yeah. he didn't ask a specific question, yeah. I didn't want to. Bottom line of what was driving it. Yep. I think the question is, is, 
did somebody complain about something? Is what well, they see the phrase, so they're probably wondering how, where the money's coming from. Are right. we, you know, in this case, it's a voluntary fund that we discussed, right, versus the town. Yeah, well, that's what the law area. requires. It's, yeah. it's, right. it's, well, I would suggest that a lot of people didn't read the final sentence. I would agree. But that's mm -hmm. just being second on control, sim or, I mean, or, to or your point, Chris, right. their point on control F, there, the second question, why was the penalty changed? The penalty, you know, they didn't read the original piece, which is that the original version had a range which our attorneys tell us attorney, we shouldn't do. Yeah, that we should have a single fee. And Bill, and Bill Coleman has provided a little more detail uh, in response to this this morning, and, and uh, so I'm going to be forwarding that to Don Rowe as well. Yeah. Just to clarify how they picked $100 versus picking the high number in the range, for instance. Perfect. Right, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. He also asked about J and K, which you'll see uh, further in today's discussion. How are they is, planning has on been combined. Their questions? So, uh, what, Excuse me? <laughs> so, like, how... Easy. So, I guess, yeah, I mean, part of my question is like some of these are easy, right? Like the L and M, we can explain what that is. That's, that's all tied to Parker Street. And we just talked about the clarification. I guess my, my thing on J and K, <coughs> saying that we have a number of questions, but we're waiting to see. So where does that land us since we have to close things out with deadlines? I thought that they had a representative on the building, the fire station committee. The comments. They can make them a town meeting. So, um, yeah, but so the, the, the FinCom has already voted, I think, six of the articles that you've already approved as well. Okay. And so their recommendation will appear in the printed warrant. But the ones that they haven't voted, we have to send it to the printer, I think, by the end of the day tomorrow. It's a um, we'll say uh, FinCom to uh, recommend on the floor, something to that nature. Will and we these an are those, those ones here. That they, don't, they haven't voted them yet because they're waiting for more information. Will we know where they sit on all of that before the floor? They have to. They're yeah. supposed to tell us. Okay. Yeah, they, they have a public hearing the week before town. Right, I thought that. On the 19th. Yeah. And at that, they give their recommendations to the okay. public. So why would, wait, why would they, yeah. why are they wait so long to ask questions? It's not like this is new. I don't understand, given this as a FinCom, why they didn't send a representative tonight to ask these questions either. Yep. I'll pass that along as well. All right. <laughs> yeah, well, so J, J and K were merging into one. Uh, yeah, that was so. on our attorney's uh, right. recommendation. That's all right. We, we, we spent enough time on that email. Let's just move on to our business. Terrific. I mean, they could have come and asked these questions or sent this <coughs> yep. in a more timely fashion. It's, you know, it, the, the thing has to be done today. And I've seen emails that went to everybody saying that. So. Yeah, I, I'm not sure that he was re reacting to try to change your votes um, in any way. You've already voted most of these already. It's, oh, yeah. uh, I, don't what he's, I know what he's looking for, but. Sure. It's still late for a more useful to way to do it. Ask a question, but yeah, okay. And they met a week ago. We, we mm -hmm. could have gotten that email a few days ago. What, um, all right. So the motions are move to accept and approve control J. We have a second. Just the consult. I'll second. Okay. And control J becomes what article? That was what was uh, J is the eminent domain okay. land taking. So J and it's K a combination J? of J and K. Article 15. Got it. Okay. Any discussion about Jane K? Well, Jay, okay. <laughs> Seeing as this is the third time we're yeah. <laughs> looking at them in the consecutive meetings. <laughs> All right. And then the next one was um, move to accept and approve Control O as updated. And the second. Yeah. Second. Thank you, so just comment wise, I mean, I'm going to vote for this, but I just have hesitation. I just want to make sure that we haven't done anything to jeopardize our ability to ask for that 3% impact fee because that's critical. Well, as we said, we'll have to right. end up doing it on the floor. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. We, could, we could do that. It's too. just a pain. That would be worst case. It is, but yeah, we're still looking at Yeah, I mean, I like your yeah. best case scenario where we mm -hmm. could just do it by. As a fee. Yeah, yeah as a fee <coughs> implemented by the Board of Selectmen. Is it in the. Uh, yeah. If it's a fee, I believe that's going to be the case. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a temporary tax. It would have to go to 10 million. Right. But it's a fee. No, oh, all those in favor. Uh, is this the final copy? Because I see that on uh, Article no. 10 where it says Article, I think, is that, I don't know if that is a typo or whatever. It says Article underscore acceptance of gift of land. 
or if that was supposed to be a number that was filled in there that was just sort of a unless you got a copy about half an hour before the meeting it's not the final edit okay. but that's just a there's a, there's I, don't a extraneous I don't know if page it's a typo. I don't know no, it is a, that is a typo because yeah. it's just a duplication of the header yeah there you yeah. go yeah yeah all right so now we're on to the warrant um, as shown the updated version Motion is removed to accept and approve the special town meeting warrant as shown. There's a second. With the updates. I'll second it. Thank you, Melissa. Um, anybody have any conversation about the, um, the warrant as shown? Nope. Other than the one question David just asked, which Sorry. Andrew and Becky seem to have answered. All right. All those in favor? Gracias. Okay. Budget, budget, budget. <sighs> that sums it up. Yes. <laughs> Since the tenth, um, there is no major budget news to share with you. I can give you the up to date snow and ice number that does not include this past weekend. I don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it? <laughs> not as bad as I feared, but okay. it's a number. Um, and uh, I have a appointment with the uh, Health insurance company for February 28th will have our official rate number that day. And um, we were told today that our dental rates are not going up. Okay. So the same as last year. Same as this year. Okay. The, um, I don't know, for, for, for what it's worth, we just got an email while we, while we're here tonight from the schools that everyone. So, uh, yeah, I forwarded that. Him, oh, they they want to send their representation to our next meeting to discuss the budget, so. And my question on that, which I forwarded to you, Andrew, and cc Chris on, was just, you know, I, Chris and I were talking before the start of the meeting that we had recollected that FinCom wanted to have another joint meeting among the three boards. I think with the idea, I'm, I may be misremembered, but I thought that they wanted, to, they wanted to host something to have a budget discussion after the budget presentation. Yeah, but, FinCom did. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just kind of curious about, I mean, under the category of, trying not to duplicate messages in different venues you know is that i'll send it, i mean i'll reply to him and say you know is this different or separate from the the meetings that we've been having and if it is you know it's a different story but i you know i would assume i would have assumed that since we've the three of us agreed as three separate committees to work on this together that we would all three be in the room for the discussion but if they're looking to have a separate discussion, then that, that's that's you know obviously that's the problem. Okay. I, don't, I don't I don't know what you know. I don't know if the business of that, the intention of that group in the fall and, and into the winter was has been met. I know that there's a sort of a permanence to it that you want to continue having these conversations, but is there some specific reason they want to meet before? No, because Don Don know. Rose said on the tenth his only comments were that he's going to try and set up that third meeting. He he made he said that you know at the um, budget meeting so. We'll see. I mean, that's we'll yeah. see where that goes. But I mean, I know typically in the past the meetings that FinCom has hosted have been more about long term. Have those have been long terms? Yeah. Um, so it, it could be an apples and oranges thing. But again, I just you know if they're if there's an if they're planning if they are going to have the same type of a conversation with FinCom, do we want to try and do something a little bit different and have all three here? I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. At, I'm going to guess that this meeting is, or them coming, is in lieu of the annual letter, demand letter for hmm. over and above the, the budget amount. So we'll see. Uh, I mean, we can put them on. We can add them to the agenda for the next meeting. But right, I think that the I just read the email and and they're asking specifically to have their budget subcommittee members come, which. Um, you know, to me, it makes more sense if we're going to have a substantive conversation here that it be both the entire boards that discuss it rather than the budget subcommittee. Um, but that's just me. They're trying to be kind about it. They're not trying to be as aggressive. You know, they're not trying to be pushy. It, I think, you know, I, I just wonder if it's better served if we meet as groups. I'm a little confused. Is this coming from Don Rowe or from No, the no, there was board? an email that you haven't seen. You'll, you'll Justin, have it. You just Justin haven't. Hem sent an email. During our we meeting. That, okay. well, since we've been here, that suggests that they want to be on the agenda for our next meeting um, with their budget subcommittee group. 8.34 p.m. Their budget. Oh, I see. So 
I don't, I don't object to it. I don't think anyone else does either, so we can add them, but. To the March 6th meeting, then? Is yeah. It, is it yeah. March 6th? Yeah. It might be nice to just notify FinCom that they're going to be on the agenda. If that's the route. We, I mean, I think let's yeah. Yeah, figure out what too. the route is. Just as a courtesy. But he's, he's, yeah, you know, again, we would great, greatly appreciate the opportunity for further discussion prior to the Warren articles being finalized. Yep, yeah, that's the annual Warren articles. Yeah. So that's April 3rd. So we have a few meetings to squeeze yeah. in. Two. Three, April 3rd would be yeah. the third, yeah. Yeah, we have to decide April 3rd. I'm fine with it if they want to come in. More the merrier. If we want to invite the FinCom reps from the, the, the budget subcommittee at the same time, that's fine too. It's okay with me. Rom, you hardly knew you were here. Mm. I thought you fell asleep. I thought you fell asleep. Yeah, we'll be ready. <laughs> have a good night. You too. Thank you, guys. Good night. Good night. All right, so so we're all, you know, we're, we know where it is. Um, we see the town administrator's report. I only have one question. Gruber's got sold from the guy from Acton. Yeah, yeah they, they flipped it pretty quick. Did they do anything? They literally bought they it? And they, 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 they'll they, put they, art in it. Yeah, they, they, they permitted <laughs> the uh, cultural, cultural room, council right? to they, art. Yeah, there's uh, really the much value. art in there, what's it? <laughs> This is a little bit in the, the front window. windows, and they're changing it out, I think, this month. Um, the new owner is uh, welcoming the art uh, and is planning a building. Um, the application's not in, but it's going to be uh, something compliant with the downtown overlay district with retail and housing. That's the, the plan. I wonder if the co-op's looking at it. Just saying. There's no parking. They don't like it because of the lack of um, I've read the parking study, Melissa. Yeah, there's plenty of parking, there's Melissa. There's plenty of parking. Okay. They're going to go underground. Hey, petty jobs. We can do petty deliveries. Oh, yeah, but it's not 24-hour parking. And if they have <laughs> if they have residential, then there needs to be parking for... The proposed uh, development is going to be underground parking. Hmm. On the water? Right next to the water? What's park the at your own risk. <laughs> Right. Shoot, go right the it doesn't have to be underground, but it can be like under the level, right? Well, you go right they the got high water table. Dude, go right the insurance. <laughs> no, that's up the hill. <laughs> go right the insurance for those people. Can you can you, can you insure an automobile for water anymore? No, you can, but surface. All right. Level. So we got the town administrator's report. Parker and my report was just um, what, you know, that that whole thing about the um, couple of the letters that we got would have been part of my report, but we covered it all. Um, what we didn't you didn't tell us what the um, snow mump, snow number was. <laughs> I was asked not to. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I'll know. take the bad news. It's left. okay. What's, what's the snow it's number? A, it's uh, right here. It's still there. Is 188,416 dollars uh, beyond the uh, what's in the budget? Oh, that's not bad, considering we've had two snows since the meeting. It doesn't count this past weekend. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, I told you it's not good news. Time to stay home. <laughs> Excuse me. I didn't hear much plow activity on my street. Did we tell them to stay home? Yeah, they knew it was going to melt. Woke up the <laughs> yeah, I heard it. They were yeah. out. So I know they were, I know they were out. Yeah. Um, By the way, was this was this the acting TA's report or was this the final TA? That's, that's my report. Is this oh, yours right. or is this Stephanie's first and final? What is this? It's my, this? Stephanie does the formatting, but it's okay. The content, Your content. Comes from me and the police chief and <laughs> the other tell. topical things that are in there. There's actually, less pictures. I, yeah, I don't think I'd ever bring this up, but. Uh, Actually, I'm surprised that uh, it was in there. The sharps disposal, we've got to make sure that doesn't happen again. Because actually, I know someone who was trying to deposit stuff into there a couple different times, and it was full the whole time. I didn't realize they weren't picking it up. <coughs> yeah. I just thought we were disposing an enormous amount of sharps. Yeah, did you get the full story in there? It's not a great story, but the, the company turned over, and the, the old company was the only one with the keys. Uh -huh. So it didn't get empty because nobody could open it for... Gotcha. Whatever it was, two months or three months or whatever. It was a while, yeah. Yeah, but you know, it, it fills up basically every two weeks, so it's it's a regular thing. All right. Well, I'm glad to see that's rectified. So, no, I appreciate it. this. Is a lot of good information in this particular uh, chairman. I mean, town minister's report. So, more to come. Lots of great things happening. So, is this um, is this it? This well, the well issue that we had last week is repaired now. Sorry. The well issue we had last week is repaired. Is that what this picture the, shows? Uh, that's the uh, that's Glen Drive. Glen Drive. 
Okay. Oh yeah. Glen Road, Glen Drive, whatever. Yeah. So it was. Uh, yeah, those came from Aaron. Those photos. And what do we do? Well, okay. Yeah, it talks about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I saw this truck going by with a lot of dirt. I'm like, what? What's going on? Why is the DPW driving by? I didn't know that that happened. So. You're building a, uh, a moat for your uh, yeah, chaining need... wall or whatever you want to call Ooh, it. You don't need water a moat. Bag, I guess. Charge for that? <laughs> <laughs> um, around town hall. So board member reports, um, Melissa, anything? Uh, the only thing I was going to remind people of is that our annual town election is May 1st, and there's numerous um, open terms on various committees, including two on this board. And the last day to get nomination papers um, from town hall is coming up on March 9th. Okay. That's it? That's it. Nice to see you walking again. Hey, I'm appreciating it. Terrence? Yeah, I will second that and add that there's a school committee slot open as well, too, which is very important, too, right? So three major spots open from an executive standpoint in town. Be, there's going to be two open. Yeah. Two? Well, one. at least one Mary unfortunate one. 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 That one's running. So hers is up, and Mary... Mary um, hers, we will fill. Meaning she's yeah. not rerunning for her uh, seat, so there's definitely going right. to be yeah. a change. Yeah, because she won't have time, right? right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, okay. that's my also. Job. I got uh, good reports actually from my from Moles about the uh, the initial kickoff week of the interim town manager. So uh, thank you for putting together that that meeting, and uh, I think it's a good way to start and uh, get meeting. people uh, back in the boat. So I wish you the best of luck, Andrew. Thank you, Terrence. It was a good meeting. Yep. Mr. Gavin. Yeah, I. Um, I want to congratulate the girls' basketball team. Um, for those of you who uh, don't know, they, they've struggled for years. And um, this year, they won the, the conference championship. They're headed to the state tournament. And along with the boys' team, who last year, as we all know, won the state championship, once again will rep be representing Maynard, both of them, in the, um, in the state tournament. So uh, those are, you know, for a small town, we do pretty well with our high school athletics, and we should be proud of it. That's it. Cheryl? Uh, just two quick items. Uh, one, just closing the loop on correspondence that each member of the board had received on February 1st from Garrett Connolly about cannabis cultivation. Um, Bill did respond on behalf of the town, CCing uh, Kevin and Andrew, just advising them as to the status of our approval. So that correspondence piece was closed. And then as a second item, um, I've submitted to Andrew and Becky and Chris a frequently asked questions document about the fire station. Um, so I can, if we can actually send that out, Becky, to the board, that would be great. But I've also asked it to be put in the record so it can be part of the public record. Um, and this just uh, was developed sitting down with the chief and with Ron to kind of go through what are a bunch of the questions sure, that have typically come up. How much money have we spent in the past? Where are we at in the process? And it's all in one place, so I'm sure we'll get questions about this going forward so that every member of the board can have the same data to refer to. And Andrew, thank you for your review of my dates and references in that as well. So, And we did do have, have a conversation with Holly Camaro about the um, warrant articles in the fire station. Yeah, um, that was, online too. Yeah, so. Yeah, so. So what I heard is you're owning the fire station article on the floor. Oh, yeah, we're going to do that soon, too. That's what I heard you just say. Our next say. meeting, you'll be approving <laughs> warrant articles for me. We'll decide who's, who's talking no. about what, right? Isn't that what you just said? I'm happy to. David, you're not going to get to I mean, I'll expect that all of you will be ready to <laughs> have all the data now that I've collated it for you. And so we, I, had one, I had a suggestion made to me by somebody at the budget meeting that wanted to know if it would be possible to start an hour early and present the budget information before the town meeting and have people man the projector and everything else. And um, I, I, I have uh, considered it and I, I talked to people who would have to do the work and that's not gonna happen. So I can you say that again? I was asked to have all the information presented at the February 10th budget meeting presented prior to the special town meeting or the town meeting to the town so the people would have the information before the meeting. They should have attended the meeting. Well, they, well, they weren't invited, but um, they were, but they weren't. But 
the, the, That's point, like the, the my point was I, I spoke to people who were involved in that particular day's activities or those two nights activities and were just like how are we going to do that you, you know you have to find volunteers to come in early and do it, it mm -hmm. you, you're trying to set and set up the actual process and, and meet all the requirements it just can't happen so that was the response I got you know in the discussions I've had with a few people involved so yeah it, there would be a lot of logistical issues because you'd have to empty out the room so that they could tabulate who's in the room and because otherwise you're coming into town meeting, not the town meeting for another meeting, and it just becomes a real yeah, it's a, it's just, That's why we, we have, have to be careful too. Have a big problem. Town, we have public meetings. Town meeting is actually the moderator's meeting, not the board of selectors mm -hmm. meeting. So yeah, well, people need to be aware of that as well. Yeah, I know that's his meeting. He was the one who suggested it. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah. So he's. I, then if he, if I he wants to, I haven't spoken no. to him yet. No. I, mean, I wouldn't entertain the idea. It's just too much. Too much. <laughs> Even if he wants to do work. it by hosting it and going through it by yeah, himself. He wants to do it. <laughs> I, I just, you know, I, I talk to the people that typically run the special town meeting and the annual town meeting. You know, the logistics of those two events, and the people that actually do the work for the logistics of those two events. It's just it would be a, a complete nightmare. The clerk's office would be the one that would be. You know, uh, the the problem would be. You know, when you get people in the building, you're going to tell them, okay, you now you have to go back outside, exactly. come in and sign yeah. yourself in, and uh, it's just a nightmare. Yeah. yeah and, oh, by the way, it's all public record. It's all out there on websites and everything else for people to gra grab it and take it and, and educate themselves. And if they want to be educated, they can come here and get educated. You certainly may want to consider in future years having it videotaped by ABM on the Saturday morning meeting to uh, have them. They have the connections in the library. It could be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. Well, we also have it outside. So our next oh, meeting yeah. is the third. <laughs> March sixth. March sixth. March sixth. Yeah, I don't know why the third is in my head. It's Saturday. We're not coming. Don't, don't come on Saturday. Um, so I make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. Second. All those in favor? Thank you all. <laughs>